the games we play in Canada. I don't know. I don't know if... if I don't think this stuff... Uh, it, I don't think it's like this in the United States, the games that we play here with universal health care. It's the way... I think it's the way that the universal health care is, is structured. So we're smaller here in Canada. I think it's because... All these doctors are paid on uh, by the same employer. They're all we're smaller. They they know each other. They're colleagues, and then they're warned not to say, you know, derogatory things about each other or disparaging comments about each other. So. They have to cover up for each other. They have to defend each other. I've seen doctors cover up and stick up for doctors that they have no respect for, that they don't like, because this is what's expected of you. You're expect. I had a surgeon injure me. I know that there were doctors who were upset when they saw what this guy actually did. But there, it's their job to keep. It's the job of other doctors to keep their mouth shut and not help you. So, in Canada, if someone injures you, you're not going to win a lawsuit. Anyways, you're not going to win a lawsuit. Lawyers don't want anything to do with medically injured people. It, it takes an exorbitant amount of money. You have to have like tens of thousands of dollars freed up. You have to be able to go to court for two years, uh, go to, to go to a trial that's going to take two years. You have to hire witnesses outside of your community. So most people don't have that kind of money. Most, if you're really sick, you're not going to, you don't have the mental energy to be in court for two years. And you're not going to likely win anyways. You're, even if you go to court for a couple of years, you're, you're unlikely to win. So lawsuits aren't going to happen here anyways. So when a doctor injures you, everyone's covering up. You often are 100% gaslighted. You often don't even know what's going on. So there's a two-year statute of limitations, two years, a two-year window where you can sue and take it to court. It's not going to happen anyways. You're not going to win. You know, do you have, you know, how many tens of thousands of dollars and you're going to hire doctors from outside of your province or country to fly in. You're going to pay for their hotels. You're going to pay for their meals while they're in, in court with you. So that's, that's not going to happen anyways. So, but doctors act as if they're going to be taken to court, even though they're not going to be. So when you're medically injured, Everyone's covering up for you. Uh, everyone's covering up for the person that injured you. And you're being gaslighted. You don't understand what's wrong after, after the surgery, after you've been injured. So your family doctor is sending you referrals. Your referrals are being denied. Or you're getting to the specialists and you're being blown off. And you don't understand what's going on. Or you get injured from a medication. All of a sudden, you don't know why. You're everybody's, everybody's enemy. Nobody wants anything to do with you. You're, you're in crisis from a medication. Your, your whole entire body, your nervous system, your brain is under attack. Nerve damage is happening. You know, your hair and teeth are falling out. Nobody wants anything to do with you. They're scared of you. They don't know how to help you. So I'm in a situation here. 
Um, but, you know, here's the worst part. Nobody wants to speak the truth. Nobody wants to speak the truth to you. So what it is, it's this massive journey of cognitive dissonance. You're trapped in this state of, of confusion, and, and you're meant to be. They want you to not understand what's happening. The, it, it's just so unfair. And it's like, why can't you, why can't you treat people respectfully? Why can't you just tell us the truth? I'm in such a, a, a bad spot here. I don't sleep like, like, the degree how how doctors have not been truthful, how they have not been transparent, how they have not been honest, all the gaslighting, I, I feel so manipulated. And and you'll get decent decent people who become part of this, part of your, you know, doctors, you get a referral. You've got decent people who, 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 who become part of this and they become part of the gaslighting and they join in and they become part of the, well, I'm not going to answer that question. They, they, they become part of, of your journey. It, it's abusive. It's abusive to, you're getting paid a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. I'm asking you fair, legitimate questions about my health. I'm, I'm fighting to survive here and you're refusing to answer. You're just refusing to answer. You're refu refusing to speak. It's just so disrespectful and it's abusive. You've been hired by these provinces to do a job and you've got somebody in front of you in crisis and you're refusing to answer their questions. You're contributing to the harm. You're contributing to, to someone who's going to be forced to give up. You're, you're part of that. If this province is paying you a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, you're refusing to answer legitimate questions. Like, why are my breaths so far apart? Why, uh, what do I do about the lack of drive to breathe? Why, why can't I wear CPAP? Why am I in excruciating pain? Uh, like, like, like I've asked respirologists legitimate questions. Like, were the, which I know the answers to now, but you were paid to do this job. And you're refusing to answer questions. 